Today on Toy Shiz, we got some Spider-Man animated action. Let's talk toys. Welcome back, everyone. Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another re-retro Shiz look back at the future's past. And today, we are totally checking out some brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends retro Spider-Man the Animated Series figures. Kind of, sort of, a half wave. I'm just going to say 2.5. Wave 2.5. I think that that works the best. And as I've said in prior videos like this, these are loosely based on Spider-Man the Animated Series. Pulling more of that nostalgic packaging, which is a gorgeous packaging, don't get me wrong, but then the character selection kind of goes either which way. Which, if you do look back, Spider-Man the Animated Series was a mix between cartoon and comic book and everything else in between. So, it does work in that sense. And I'm very happy to finally have a Sandman action figure. I think they've done a great job with recreating some packaging that, yes, would have existed back in the Toy Biz days. And shout out to Harry Moore Design. He's the guy that tackles all these packages and the real Ghostbusters re-retro releases as well. So check him out on Instagram. But yeah, Sandman looking great. Got lots to say about that guy, but really nice card art. It's a nice thick card. It's perfect for collectors. But I'm going to open this sucker. A massive dose of radiation bonds petty criminal William Baker's body to sand, creating a massive threat to Spider-Man. Now he didn't kill Uncle Ben like Spider-Man 3. Jesus, right? And then we have Webman. And this is one where I was like, all right, I'll give it to you. You're going to repaint this Spider-Man a billion times, we know. But at least this one's kind of like a fun throwback to the Electric Company story of Spider-Man and Doctor Doom. More on that in just a few. But again, the card art is very nice. You do get some alternate hands for Webman, and he's a product of Dr. Doom's twin machine. Webman is the opposite of Spider-Man in every way. He's kind of a dunce, to be honest with you. And then we're going to the far-flung future of 2099 with a re-release of Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. If you've not read that comic, it was very cool back in the 90s. A lot of that... 2099 business hopefully that makes a return right but she gets the card art and shows you can swap out the hands when a lab accident causes half his dna to be rewritten with a spider's genetic code geneticist miguel o'hara becomes spider-man that's really great they got his name right this time it's no longer miguel o'shea right <laughs> and finally we have a very animated series venom after all these years and i'm very happy with this one because not only did i get to unveil it some months ago but it, i mean it's he's got the reds and the blues on him now, i've already gone over this figure but we'll, we'll have some fun with this don't worry and on the back side a shiny slithering alien symbiote bonds with hapless reporter eddie brock and transforms him into venom one of spider-man's most dangerous foes yes that is correct he is one of spider-man's most dangerous foes. So this is going to be a blast. Turn your brain off. Don't worry about Spider-Man the Animated Series too much. And don't worry about the comics too much. Just let this wave of action figure goodness wash over you. This is a re-retro shiz look back at the future's past of Spider-Man the Animated Series with four new figures. Spider-Man 2099, Webman, Venom, and the Sandman by Hasbro. And while I got all you Spider-Man animated fans here, I just want to say thanks so much for checking out my Retro Shiz episodes. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Now, we got a Spider-Man 2099 figure to talk about. And yes, this is a re-release all day long. He does come with a few new hands, which are actually done nice. I like this clawed hand right here. That's really cool. And he does have some cool Spider-Man hands, which that works for me. But the actual figure itself, while it is cool to get a 2099, especially for those that have never gotten a 2099 or you missed him, what have you. This is how I see Spider-Man 2099 with a light blue coloring to him. And this one, it just doesn't work as far as that goes and i'm not a huge fan at all of how the webbing goes in the back now with the comics it's very weird how the webbing as fixes it just depends on the artist which i get fine but this 
doesn't really look the best. It's kind of, eh, I wish it had different ways of kind of distributing the webbing, you know what I mean? The chest symbol, it works, it's fine. I think the reds is nice. You can take the webbing off on whatever you want to do. I do like that you can flip it around because then that becomes kind of comic book accurate in that sense and you can have fun while posing him. And while he does pose well and he looks good, this was the perfect opportunity to put it on the new body. Now, if they do it again and then they go, oh, we're using the new Spider-Man body, well, shame on us for buying it. If you're looking for a good $20.99 figure, this is okay. But for me, the coloring wise and everything else, it doesn't really match or elevate what's come before because this is not the first Spider-Man Marvel Legends 2099 figure, nor is it the first in terms of Toy Biz. So if you see on the old Toy Biz one, the lighter blue really is 2099 to me. Now, I guess you could say the more cape clip-on thing doesn't work perfectly unless... <laughs> Wait, we got to make it official. Flaming sword and all. And 2099, you say? Well, that'll be coming to Retro Shiz coming soon as well. Now, if you're not familiar with Spider-Man Unlimited, which is a quote-unquote sequel series to Spider-Man the Animated Series, although I'll never admit it, it did borrow some things from 2099. And yes, there was an old Toy Biz Spider-Man Unlimited figure, and yes, I did paint it up a little bit just to better match the cartoon. But no, Hasbro, if you're wondering, I don't want any more figures made of that series. And while this may be great for those of you that missed Spider-Man 2099 before the last couple times they've made a figure of him, I still don't think it's the perfect look for 2099. There's still a couple tweaks here and there that definitely could be improved upon, and if they do end up putting it on the new body, well, I think it'll look even better. But if you do, make sure to give them that baby blue. Now, next up, we finally have, in so many ways, our official first Spider-Man the Animated Series, Sandman. And I say this because we've gotten other Toy Biz Sandmans, Marvel Legends Sandmans, but this is a really cool looking Sandman. And he comes with a lot of sand attachments and i definitely dig that you got the sand spike ball which we've seen with diamond select and you got the forearm sand like he's gradually morphing into his weapon hands and you've got this really cool punchy spiky hand nice texturing overall very happy with how these sand effects came out i think they look great and then you have an interesting head portrait i wouldn't say it's the best don't really know what's happening. Maybe he got hit with a rocket launcher or something like that. But overall, I mean, I'm glad they included something. Because with this Sandman, that's exactly what I think of when I think of the Sandman. He's got the green t-shirt. He's kind of Norman Osborn-ish in the portrait, right? That's just the style back then. They all had the cornrow type hair or whatever Norman Osborn and Sandman had. But the head portrait came out really nice. I love the colors of the green. I think that that's very, very cool to see. You got the pants, you got the boots. It's very Marvel Legends-ish, but you know, at the same time, it definitely works. And he photographs beautifully. Now we've had prior Sandmans, like the last one, which was a Build-A-Figure, entirely too big. Took on the absorbing man body, just too big for the Sandman. But this one really corrects all of that. He's a great looking Sandman figure. And when you have him going up against Spider-Man in that sense, yeah, you can make for a lot of great photos. Now for this, I would think that, you know, Spider-Man usually webs him in the chest or something like that, but hey, this works as well. He's going for the head and it goes right through his face. That's actually kind of cool when you get it all set up like that. And speaking of which, let's say Spider-Man the Animated Series. It goes that John Semper Jr. wanted to use Sandman Electro, but there was a James Cameron film in production. Never got made, but it wasn't until the end of the series the production fell through. They included Electro for that last five-parter for the animated series, but Sandman sadly never made it in. One thing about this retro Spider-Man line is that it's not without its fair share of villains, and that is actually really cool to see because that's a lot of classic looks for a lot of classic Spider-Man rogues. And they're not always perfect, Green Goblin. And while they're not always Spider-Man the Animated Series accurate, they're actually doing them a lot of justice here. And I'm very happy so far because we're actually being set up for a really nice Sinister Six, right? We got three so far. Now, technically, you could say that old Green Goblin is part of it in some way. I think he's been a member, but... Yeah, and for those of you Spider-Man 3 fans, click off this video right now and never talk to me again. 
<laughs> Just kidding. That movie was terrible. And as I said earlier, you know, maybe Norman Osborn-ish. Nah, head's entirely too big for the Green Goblin. Now, this is not the first Sandman figure. It won't be the last, but this is... The Flippin' Trap Sandman from Toy Biz, and this is the BJ's exclusive Maximum Clonage Hydro Man repaint, which became Sandman, so you see where I'm going with this. This new Marvel Legends figure actually does the Sandman quite a bit of justice. Great hand attachments, great paint, great look, could fit in with Spider-Man the Animated Series. I think you'll be very happy with this toy. Speaking of which, if you haven't grabbed any of these animated Spider-Man figures or you're looking to grab the new ones, simply head over to Entertainment Earth and type in that Spider-Man retro-ness. You can grab the newest Spider-Man Wave 3 coming soon. Lots of great characters in that one. Phew, I'm very excited for. I'm actually stoked on Hammerhead. He's actually straight from the animated series. But whether you're looking for the newest pre-order or a toy you may have missed, head over to Entertainment Earth and check them out now. Continuing on, we have Webman, the inverted Spider-Man, and just to be right up front, no, this Webman never appeared in Spider-Man the Animated Series, although he does come with a bevy of extra hands. You got some wall-crawling hands, you got some web flipping hands, and you got some punching hands, which is a nice assortment of hands, because you have a really nice-looking Spider-Man, and I really like the blues and the reds that they've chosen for this figure. It's nice to even have like a repaint like this, that it's actually based off a character. He's got the wrong pins, of course, going on. It's not the new Spider-Man body mold. It's one we have seen before, but you do get a nice range of articulation out of him. So I'm very happy in that sense. He can do whatever a Spider-Man can, but you can see the difference between Wave 1's Spider-Man and then this one as well. Both achieve really nice articulation. Still, the pins are wrong. But in looking at 2099, I would say I think he would have benefited a little bit better with this type of bodies. 2099 is a little bit too spindly at this point. Yes, it's great to have some differentiation between musculature and body types, of course, but I just think he would have benefited from having a more updated articulation scheme. And if you have the new Doctor Doom, or heck, let's be honest, any Doctor Doom, you can recreate the Electric Company story from way back when Doctor Doom gets a hold of a mirror and, I don't know, creates a duplicate of Spider-Man, but he's the reverse. It's not very smart, Spider-Man. That's all I'm going to say. There was a Toy Biz figure produced back in the day. It came with a big robotic battle suit. I have a full video up on my Retro Shiz Spider-Man the Animated Series vids, but I think that the new Webman's Blues are a whole heck of a lot better, especially in matching the comic book source material. Really do suit him better. And yes, speaking of suits, here's the big robotic battle suit that Webman comes with. No, don't be thinking you'll be getting this new Hasbro Webman in this suit anytime soon, no matter what you do. So, in terms of repaints, it's a welcome one. It's a new character. Yes, the pins don't match up. Yes, they could have given him some more webbing accessories and whatnot, but in either case, it's a pretty cool figure to have for your Spider-Man shelf. Which finally does bring us to Venom. This is the Venom I've been waiting so very long for all these many years to have a Spider-Man, the animated series, Venom. And he does come with hands, and as I've stated over and over in my video, yes, he is missing the white patches on his hand. He does come with an extra head portrait. This one's the tongue inside his mouth version, and it's nice to see a little bit of differentiation between the two, and I can't tell you how great it is to finally have this Venom back in hand. Yes, he does still have the holes on the top. No, I don't like it. The spider's all wrong. The spider's especially wrong on the back. It's too smush. He doesn't have the white patches on the tops of his hands, but you know what? I really like this figure because I'm a huge Spider-Man, the animated series fan, and that's all there is to it. I likes what I like, so I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back. Now, in pairing him up with older Spider-Man the Animated Series Toy Biz figures, we could be here all day with the amount of Venoms I have. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a Venom video. These old Venoms did get it right, though. They always had the white patches. This one had an Eddie Brock head. That would have been cool to have, especially with going with the whole Spider-Man animated motif. And if you were wondering, I think that the hands that have come with prior Venoms that do have the white patches are entirely too small. Now this particular Iron Man wasn't out just yet when I unveiled this Venom, but it's nice to have this War Machine and this Iron Man go together, especially when going up against Carnage. Very reminiscent of the two-parter in Spider-Man the Animated Series. And speaking of Spider-Man, 
I think that these two go together great. The height on the Venom is perfect. He just looks good. And yes, this is not a perfect figure. It very well could have been, but that's something I'd like to point out to Hasbro. If you're going to do Spider-Man the Animated Series, really do it justice. You have to pay attention to these little details because otherwise it looks like you're not watching the show. But if you do these types of characters, you got to have the right elements that make the characters who they are. And in looking to the future, if and when the Spider-Man animated retro line continues, these are my musts. A Punisher with the blues, the trench coat and the headband, the chameleon and his really interesting attire. You gotta have an Alistair Smythe, that would be a first for Marvel Legends. Vulture in his really cool 90s gear. Morbius, of course, straight from the animated series. Gotta do the red eyes with the blue hair. And then... A big monstrous man spider, and I mean a man spider that's straight from the animated series. We already had the comic book one that was based on the animated series, but we need a full-blown animated series man spider. But let me know down in the comments which ones you would like to see made. And that's going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new Wave 2.5-ish, we'll just say, of the Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man the Animated Series retro figures. Quite a collection so far, and I find myself gravitating more towards these, more towards the quote-unquote animated line, more towards the X-Men animated VHS line that is coming out soon. That's what I grew up with. That, to me, is the epitome of Marvel. Not just the comic books, but the animated series that I used to watch and still adore to this day. Yes, they're not exactly based on the animated series 100%, would I like to see more spot-on character designs, like a Peter Parker walking straight out from Spider-Man the Animated Series? Heck yeah, I would. But so far, so good, and there are a lot of great characters they have chosen, both for the Animated Series and the comic book line. But I am curious to know what you guys think about these new four figures. Are they for you? Have you grabbed them? Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Spider-Man the Animated Series. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, make mine Marvel, baby. And when it's animated, heck, that's even better. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.